Hello guys and welcome to another video in the video series of RCC and in this video we will be discussing about analysis of a T-beam that is flanged beam and starting with this question which has a calculate moment of resistance of beam following using M20 curve grid and Tor steel where Tor steel is Fe415 steel and we have a flange beam section with uh, 5 number of bars of 25 mm and starting with the given we have Fy that is yield strength of steel that is 415 Newton per mm square for Tor steel FCK is given as 20 Newton per mm square and uh, for the flange section as I say the flange portion with the flange is given as 1000 mm as it has been also indicated in the figure width of wave BW is given as 250 mm and depth of flange DF it is given as 100 mm and depth of beam D it, it is the effective depth okay it is given as 500 mm now area of steel that is AST 5 numbers of bars so 5 into pi by 4 into size 25 this comes as 2454.36 mm square now we have to understand three cases the basic difference between a normal beam and a flange beam is here that is we have to identify whether the neutral axis lies within the flange or outside the flange the first assumption we'll make here is that assuming neutral axis lies within the flange now let us draw the section considering that neutral axis lies within the flange so this will be the neutral axis which lies within the flange and uh, let us draw the strain profile as we know it is rectangular and parabolic in combination these are the number of bars and up to this point this is the depth effective depth tension and compression so at neutral axis now the concept is same that is at neutral axis compression will be equal to tension and for with tension and compression we have the formula for compression as 0.36 fck b now depth that is xu that is the depth of neutral axis from the compression bf into xu bf because we have considered that the neutral axis lies within the flange so bf into xu is equal to 0.87 fy ast now taking all the components except xu in the right hand side we get 0.87 fy that is 415 into area of steel that is 254.36 divided by 0.36 into 20 into 1000 that is bf this comes as 123.07 mm now this is the depth of neutral axis as per our assumption now let us check whether our assumption is correct or not so for neutral axis to be within the flange xu that is depth of neutral axis should have been less or equal to df so it is no because it is 123 and that is 100 so not correct now neutral axis lies outside flange that is the conclusion from our first assumption let me make it clear if it was true suppose okay it is not needed in this step just this is a uh, concept here if it was true that is neutral axis would have lied within the flange then moment of resistance would have been calculated as compressive force that is C into lever arm now what we know the rectangular portion is 3 by 4 of X 3 by 7 of XU and the remaining portion would be D minus 3 by 7 into XU compressive force and the lever arm for the neutral axis is d minus 0.42 that is 3 by 7 is 0.42 xu in this way moment of resistance would have been calculated now as our case is not satisfied as neutral axis lies outside the flange there may be two cases that can be obtained from annex g of is 456 code in page number 96 xu less than df the moment of resistance may be given from the equation given in g 1.1 you can see here mu that is 0.87 fy ast d 1 minus as fy by b d f c k now but this case hasn't been satisfactory for us so we have to go for another condition and for which we have g 2.2 and when the ratio df by d does not exceed 0.2 we will be using this equation 
and if ratio d a by dx is 0 point to third case so 3 by 7 of x u greater or equal to d f this is first case and second is 3 by 7 of x u less than d f these are the two cases let me draw the section again so this is the strain profile okay a combination of a rectangular and a parabolic portion this is 3 by 7 of x u and the remaining will be 4 by 7 of x u 3 by 7 of x u greater or equal to d f that is the rectangular portion would lie outside the flange and uh, as our assumption neutral axis will be outside the flange too so considering the rectangular portion outside the flange and the re uh, remaining is parabolic portion so at neutral axis compression will be equal to tension and compression we have two types of forces that is c1 and c2 so c1 plus c2 is equal to tension and uh, for compressive force we have in the rectangular portion that is 0 0.36 fck now what will be the width so we are considering the wave portion because it has been assumed that the neutral axis lies outside the flange so we will be taking a width of wave and xu so bw into xu plus for c2 should be considered in the portion except the wave portion considered for c1 that is bf minus bw so 0 0.446 so what is this the strain that we have already discussed in intro part so 0 0.446 fck bf minus bw into df because we are considering the flange portion so 0 0.87 fyast for the tension now taking all the components except x u in the right hand side 0 0.87 fy ast minus 0 0.446 fck bf minus bw df by 0 0.36 fck bw substitute the value here x u is equal to 0 0.87 into 415 into 2454.36 minus 0 0.446 into 20 into 1000 minus 250 into 100 for df okay df is 100 divided by 0 0.36 into 20 into 250 so xu comes as 120.63 mm that is the depth of neutral axis now we have to check whether our assumption is correct or not so 3 by 7 of x that is 3 by 7 of 120 comes as 51.7 mm so the value of df is 100 so it is not correct then we have to go for another case that is case number second which says 3 by 7 of x u less than df now again let us draw the section this is the effective depth this is df depth of flange and for now the rectangular portion of the strain lies above the flange that is within the flange section which is 3 by 4 of sorry 3 by 7 of x2 make a correction over here and uh, this is the neutral axis and parabolic portion From IS 456, page 97, the value of Y is taken as 0.15 XU plus 0.65 DF. The depth from the compression fiber to the rectangular portion is taken as Y. And at neutral axis, C is equal to T. Or substituting the value of C, that is 0.3, as we have already said, we are considering the wave portion, so 0.36 fck bw xu plus 0.446 fck bf for the portion of flange bf minus bw into yf now because we are considering the flange portion up to the rectangular portion so yf is equal to 0.87 fy ast
now taking all the terms except x u in the right hand side we get this expression substituting the value now the value of y f is not calculated so we'll be taking the equation because we don't know the value of x u so 0.15 x u plus 0.65 into 100 because value of d is 100 df so 0.36 fck that is 20 bw 250 on solving x u is equal to 160.97 mm that is 3 by 7 of x u that is 3 by 7 of 160.97 comes as 68.98 which is less than 100 that is df so our assumption is correct then for mor now we are able to calculate mor because our assumption is correct our calculated neutral axis is also correct so we can use this equation for calculating mor when df by d so what is this df by d ratio so let me make it clear note df by d that is depth of flange to the depth of beam if the ratio is greater than 0.2 or less or equal to 0.2 we can go for case 2 and case 1 so as I have already discussed about case 1 and case 2 while starting our topic when the depth of neutral axis lies outside the flange so case 1 case 2 respectively but every time this assumption is not satisfactory so we have to go as our sequence that I have done in this video now for consideration of section Axial limiting has to be calculated which is 0 0.48 into D for Fe415 and 0 0.48 into 500 and this comes as 240 mm since Xu that we have calculated which is 160.97 is less than Xu limiting that is 240 mm hence it is a under reinforced section then we can calculate MOR using the formula from the code that is C1 this is the lever arm and this is C2 and this is the lever arm so lever arm has to be calculated here let me draw the section again the previous part that is c1 and liver arm is same c2 is different here so as i said yf this is the distance from the compression zone or extreme edge of the compression zone to the point where the rectangular portion of the strain profile ends and this is the depth of beam and this is the strain profile rectangular and uh, parabolic portion so this will be the lever arm that is d minus y f by 2 for the parabolic portion 0.36 into 20 into 250 into uh, value of x that is 160.97 d that is 500 minus 0 0.42 into 160.67 plus 0 0.446 into 20 into 1000 minus 250 into y f that has not been calculated now we have the value of x u so 0 0.15 into 160.97 plus 0 0.65 into df that is 100 this comes as 89.14 mm substitute the value of yf into 500 minus 89.14 divided by 2 and this comes as this comes as 596.87 kN meter that is the moment of resistance of this beam now if it was true that is if our case first was satisfactory then moment would have been calculated as a different way in a different way that is from this formula in case of yf we would have been using df because the rectangular portion lies outside the flange so the centroidal distance would have been df by 2 so d minus df by 2 and this would be taken if df by d does not exceed 0 0.2 as i said here also df by d if it exceeds 0 0.2 case 2 and if it is less or equal to 0 0.2 case 1 so for our case case 1 and case 2 are given here as i have already discussed so thank you but every time it is not satisfactory i hope you understood thank you do like and subscribe do comment